Welcome to the Grant Writing Simplified Podcast. This is the place to learn how to make a big impact in your community through grant writing and nonprofit consulting. The world needs you to step forward as a grant writer and use your skills to lead with confidence. I'm Teresa Huff, former special ed teacher turned grant writer and nonprofit strategist. In my 20 years of freelancing, I've helped nonprofits triple their funding and exponentially increase their reach. Now I'm stepping up to mentor freelancers and nonprofit leaders like you who are ready to take your skills to the next level. It's time to get intentional about your vision so you can create lasting change in your community. Learn the skills and strategies you need to become the grant writer the world needs. Let's do this. Hey friends, welcome back. In case you didn't hear the news, my TEDx talk is live. You can catch it. It's called The Real ROI of Grant Writing. And people are saying that the framework is so helpful and so useful in sharing with board members and colleagues in the space to help them understand how we can better support nonprofits with the grant process. So make sure you check it out. It's on YouTube. You can just search my name, Teresa Huff TEDx Talk, and it'll pop right up. I would love for you to watch and share. I'm trying to help spread the message and help educate people just to be more supportive of nonprofits and able to help our communities thrive. And that's what we all want, right? That's why we're here learning about grant writing and nonprofit work. So let's work together and do that. Today's guest is an expert in this space as well. And today I invited him because he is the CEO of Charity Navigator. And it's actually kind of a dual purpose. Now and then I like to do a nonprofit spotlight episode, as you know, if you've heard some of the past ones. And I also like sharing resources within the nonprofit space. And this episode is both because Charity Navigator is a nonprofit that serves other nonprofits. And it actually also serves donors and just the community at large because it helps connect donors with opportunities to give to nonprofits through their system. And so today, Michael Thatcher is going to share with us. And I've had the honor of working with their team for the last few months, and they are incredibly kind, passionate people about helping the world become a better place for, in their terms, more impactful giving. And I think that's a wonderful cause and a wonderful purpose to help educate and be able to make impactful giving easier for all, as they put it. So Michael today is going to take us behind the scenes and help us understand some of the big initiatives they've been working on to improve their platform this year and to improve the experience for donors and users. And they're working on some future projects as well. And he's going to give us some insight into those. He leads Charity Navigator to make philanthropy easier for all by increasing the methodologies that create ratings and go through all thousands of charities worldwide. And they expand how this can engage donors and new audiences. Michael has quite the interesting background. I won't spoil it all for you because the conversation is fascinating and different random facts come up that I think may surprise you. I know they sure did for me. So I will let him share with you, but I hope you enjoy. And his guiding mantra is follow your heart, use your head and make a difference. And I think that's a good guidance to keep in mind as we go through our work every day. So enjoy this conversation. Michael, welcome to the show. It's great to have you today. Before we dive in, tell us a random fact about yourself. A random fact. I am a surfer and a sailor. And when I was 14 years old, I was struck by lightning in a sailboat. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's a (laughs) lot right all at once. My goodness. I guess you live to tell the tale. I did, and I still sail, and I still surf, and the ocean is just a huge part of um, huge part of my life, and one of the one of my happy places. Okay, very good. I think that's important to have an outlet like that. Oh yeah. So, well, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came from 
surfing and sailing to <laughs> leading a nonprofit and in between. Sure. So um, I started out, as I said, you know, with surfing and sailing. I was also started out in life as an adult, as a musician and a dancer. And for the first 10 years of my adult life, I ran a 501c3 dance company with the woman who became my wife. And we were unsuccessful in actually raising funds for that organization. And I got tired of grant writing <laughs> and started and learned how to write software and work with computers and then was supporting us and our artwork through software engineering and design, as well as going to sea on oceanographic research expeditions, so back to the ocean, as a technician for the scientists. And so my role became one of collecting data and helping scientists make sense of the data, know where the data came from, and then ultimately um, create theories of change around it. And so, for example, one of the things I worked on was um, weather. And I think we um, our weather data has gotten significantly better because we had better data over the years and through some of that data collection. Fast forward um, a number of years, I leave the oceanographic and the dance world. I end up at Microsoft. We're living in Seattle, Washington, and I'm working for them in their public sector vertical on social and economic improvement initiatives in Africa, Middle East, and also Asia. Spent 10 years of my life in that in those parts of the world. And um, then reached a point where it was time for me to leave Microsoft. I wanted to come back to the United States. I had been working in sort of these large scale initiatives, stumbled upon Charity Navigator as Charity Navigator was looking for a new CEO. And it was it seemed like a perfect mix of someone with a technology background that had been working on the use of data for social and economic improvement and also someone who just wanted to come home. And so for me, it was um, it was a perfect, uh, perfect match. And that was um, about seven and a half years ago. Mm. Your story is like so many I hear where if you just looked at the different pieces on paper, it would seem like it was very random and disjointed. But when you put it all together, it's really amazing how those different pieces all combine. And now it fits perfectly with the work you're doing. I, I think so. And I think the, um, there's um when I try and tell the story and I'm and it's it's it is a bit of a disjointed story, but the one there are a couple of things that really connected for me. One is I'm I'm someone who likes I, I fall in love a lot and I fall in love with the ocean. I fall in love with um, the arts. I fall in love with um, social change. But then I have to it's kind of you fall in love with it, you become impassioned with it. You want to do something about it. But then you've got to use your head to actually make it happen. All right. And I think it's and then you, you kind of figure out right, how do I make this happen? What's the best way to get this done? And then ultimately, the you know, the last part of it is there's a sort of like the physical element of the doing, then go do something about it, right? So it's sort of follow your heart, use your head and make a difference is a mantra that I live by. And it's led me down some really strange and what appear to be disjointed paths, but they're actually all connected. And it's all connected, ultimately it's connected in my heart. And that's, that's how I uh, choose to work through life. And it's been, um, it's been a great ride. I think that's what it comes down to is figuring out that commonality that lights you up. And that can be in so many different areas. If it's anything like grant writing, it's really a mix of an art and a science and it takes both. And it sounds like you have done very much both. <laughs> and now you're able to combine those because it takes a lot of creativity too. And more of the technical aspects, but also the creative how can we problem solve? How can we fix these issues? How can we make it better? And all those different elements coming into play. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, when you think about the whole, you know, our focus at Charity Navigator is primarily on the individual donors. We're trying to encourage them to take that same journey, right? If you think about it, causes causes grab us by the heart. You know, we're, we're literally 
something happens in the world or it happens to my family or it happens to me and either it upsets me it makes me angry it it makes me want to preserve something you know let's say you know i i as a lover of the ocean, I'm also a bit of an environmentalist. I want to have a clean ocean to go surfing in. And then I go do something about it, right? So that's where the, you know, the heart piece is like, I love the ocean. The head piece is, all right, where can I find a good organization that's actually preserving the oceans and ensuring that we have oceans for the next seven generations? And then finally, it's about, all right, do I give to this organization? Do I volunteer with them? And again, that's really what we're trying to do with our platform at Charity Navigator is make it easier to bring your bring your head into the process and then go do. And that action taking is key. And I think that's where a lot of us hit a wall and get stuck. We love this cause. We want to help. We just don't know how or what would be most effective or which one is a scam, which one is a good investment, which one can really use the money. So that's where I'm glad there are more and more tools available to help us make better decisions around that. Yeah. And that's ultimately what we're working on it. You know, a charity navigator is really how do we how do we make impactful giving easier for everyone? I mean everyone really is everyone, right? So whether it's someone with five dollars or five million dollars, um yeah, anyone, anyone and everyone. I have gotten to have a little peek behind the scenes the last few months from working with your incredible team and a very talented group of people. And I know that you have been working very hard this year on some big initiatives to improve this and make this even better. So give us a sneak peek to what's coming. Sure. I mean, well, what's coming is a whole new website um, with a a different, um, let's say, a, a revised or an updated brand image of Charity Navigator. We're really trying to focus on the search and the, the discovery experience. And then I think really importantly, it's um, it's a unified rating system. So if you've been following what we've been doing over the last couple of years, um, two years ago, we launched something called the Encompass Rating System, which was essentially um, an alternative to the star rating system, which is now 20 years old. The star system was looking at accountability and financial metrics, primarily based on the IRS Forms 990 and what was publicly available on a nonprofit's website. The Encompass system keeps that sort of accountability and finance element, but then is looking at leadership and adaptability. What's the what's the mission of the organization? Is there a theory of change? Um, you know, who's who's the leader and how are they working? We also look at something we call culture and community, which is essentially looking at how do you engage with your constituents or the or the the people that you're or your beneficiaries, if you like. And the other thing that we've introduced in this in the last year is also what are the internal DEI practices or diversity, equity, and inclusion practices within an organization? Worth noting that that data is coming to us from Candid. So we have a partner data partnership with Candid that allows us to bring in information that nonprofits have reported to Candid on their DEI practices on the how we listen portions of um, the profiles that Candid collects. The leadership and adaptability data we're collecting ourselves through the nonprofit portal. And then finally, and probably most importantly, is that when you have those three components of sort of strong finances, good leadership, strong engagement with the communities you serve, what are the results and the impact that you're making in the world? And so we're beginning, we've introduced sort of an impact assessment. And that's, so that, that's the encompass rating system. Um, Sort of want to keep, keep all my uh, stories together here. That system and the star rating system have been brought together into a single system. What that means is that everyone now is going to get a zero to four star rating. The encompass rated charities, um, you know, they're just moving into the new system. And then the star rated charities will now have the encompass elements as a part of their overall score. This is being revealed through the new website, the new brand and the, and the brand narrative. It really is this whole idea of turning intent into action to go, go back to what you were saying a minute ago. It's, it's, 
we do get stuck. And so part of what we're trying to do is help you get unstuck. Either you're going to go deeper with an organization or you may choose another one instead. Another element of the website, which I think is is has been sorely lacking over the last number of years, is the ability to search in a more refined way and find find an organization based on a cause that you care about, the size of the organization, um, its area of focus. Where where are they focused geographically? That's that hasn't been available to, uh, before, and that's now going to be part of it. And so we'll we've set up a a more intuitive search. Um, algorithm it also allows you to filter you can filter on the number of stars you can filter on the number of aspects of the rating or what we're calling beacons so go back to the four areas that i described let's say you really care about an organization's dei practice and you're only going to give to organizations that are um, really performing well on that particular attribute we'll let you we'll help you search on that and refine your search in that way Sounds like you've really created a comprehensive 360 view of a nonprofit. We're trying. In other words, it's I think that's the other the other spirit of the Encompass rating system is it's borrowing from software development approaches, which is something in um agile software development, which is to to do faster iteration mm -hmm. and try things, see how they're working, and then adjust slightly if you're if you're wrong or actually eliminate it and start over again if you're really wrong mm -hmm. and then um and so this the um there'll be a bit more volatility or let's say the, the ratings are going to change more frequently but the way we're also trying to bring in those changes is in a non-punitive way mm -hmm. one of the challenges that you have with the rating system is that it doesn't always get used constructively and so what we're trying to do is sort of make sure we're not the nonprofits can can start giving us data and then we'll score them on the data they give us. If you don't give us data, at least right now where we are, we're not going to take points away from you. So it really is about, you know, give us more information and we will tell a holistic story mm -hmm. and you'll get to be discovered in a much more, you know, through our platform. And I think that's something that um, can be quite helpful uh, to nonprofits is to have that neutral third party accreditation that's coming from an entity like Charity Navigator or even, you know, the other platforms out there. I mean, the one thing I'll say is get your data out there. So it's not just on your own website. It's on everyone else's website. Yes. And updated data is so important. I know some nonprofits, like maybe the stuff on their own site is two or three or five years old, and that's not an accurate reflection of the work they're doing, their investment in the community, their impact they're making. And that makes so much difference. It's it's really important to tell to tell your story and who you are today. I think it's also, it's challenging, uh, depending on the size of the organization, the number of people you may you may you may struggle to keep your website up to date, but it's mm -hmm. it's worth your while if that's how you're actually telling your story. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to tell your story based on who you are today and not who you were three or four years ago? Right. It's no, you know, you want to you want to stay current, and it's it is worth spending a little bit of time and effort on that. Right, even every few months, just to make sure what's changed, what how are our numbers different, how can we add a few fresh pictures. Yeah. Just to look like it's alive. Yeah. I mean, at a minimum also, it, I think there's, you know, updating your profile with charity navigator, updating your profile with candid. The beauty of our platforms is that we really do have, I mean, we have over a million unique uh, 11 million unique uh, donors coming to us on an annual basis. Wow. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. And that, that broadens your capabilities of being discovered and being supported. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to the complexity. When you say you're building a new website, you're not just slapping up a site in a box over the weekend. You're building an entire infrastructure complex website. Can you put this into context for us? Of like how many nonprofits are actually in your database? And you mm -hmm. just mentioned significant numbers of users, which takes a lot of bandwidth to support. It does. The work on the website, we spent over a year working on this new site. We are hosting the full sort of set of legally registered nonprofits in the United States. So it's 1.6 million charities. We have ratings on just almost 200,000. 
And and then, you know, so that's all on the platform. The other elements of the platform, which are, you know, again, primarily focused on the on the individual donor. We have giving tips and donor tools. We create curated lists based on specific cause areas or in response to world events. So something, you know, one of we just had two hurricanes come through the, the United States. We put together quickly, we put together a list of highly rated organizations that are actually addressing the the you know the recovery efforts after the hurricanes. Same is true for the the refugees in the war in Ukraine. So we're these are you know topical lists. There's also a giving basket, which allows donors to make donations directly to individual organizations and do that in um, either one at a time in groups. And so there, there are a lot of different donor tools there mm-hmm. um, that are all integrated into the website. So lots of charities, lots of donors, and it's, um, it's a bit of a meeting place. And so that is our goal is really to help sort of donors discover and then take action. We've also, in the last year, integrated a section on volunteering, a section on giving circles so that donors can can find, and we're doing this through partnerships. So we work with Golden Volunteer on the, on the volunteering. We work with Grapevine on giving circles, and then we're working with Free Will on how to write one's will and then leave uh, legacy gifts. Mm-hmm. which I think is also a, a really um, interesting and um, just a magical area for for nonprofits to tap into. Yes, I agree. The first time I heard about that, I thought, wow, what an incredible service to provide. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, just the robust resources on the site, the education, the additional pieces besides just the database. There's so much there to help educate and inform donors on really whatever specific area they're needing help with to find out more about. Yeah. As a nonprofit yourself, Charity Navigator is unique because most nonprofits are on the front line of a direct service. You're a large nonprofit serving nonprofits and you're serving donors. Talk to us a little bit about how that has driven your work and the challenges around that sort of role. Sure. I mean, I, th- I think the, and maybe I'll give a, a brief history of Charity Navigator because we're we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Yay. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And we started as a private foundation. So 20 years ago, we were we were founded by Pat and Marion Dugan. And Pat was a you know was a, a man who became wealthy overnight and wanted to give back and then realized he couldn't find a neutral evaluator looking at the nonprofit sector. So he created one. He was an entrepreneur and then he and he funded us for the first 12 years of our existence. At the end of that time, you know, our we grew and and Pat's wealth was declining, and so we realized we had to convert to become a five hundred one c three ourselves. Through that process, it, it it was a really interesting transition for us, and what we were fortunate enough to have already uh, gained enough website traffic that there were enough donors uh, there were enough donors using us as a tool that they cared enough to keep us going. And so what we found is that we, on average, we raise about 60% of our annual revenue through individual donations. The average donation size is about $45. So literally tens of thousands of small donations. Wow. And then the remaining 40% is really coming from foundations. And so we've been fortunate, uh, particularly in uh, more recent years, to receive uh significant funding from some of the major foundations that includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Fidelity uh, Charitable Trustees Initiative, MacArthur, and also we were fortunate to receive a McKinsey Scott gift mm-hmm. uh, a little over a year ago. So that's that's the game changer for us. And I think some of these influxes of foundation money has allowed us to make some of the changes like the new website. Mm-hmm. The individual donors help us pay pay for staff and keep the keep the ratings engine um, 
growing and and continuously updating new ratings. Mm-hmm. As a we don't have that emotionally compelling story necessarily. Um, and so we're we're yeah, our ability to help a donor connect their remote to their story has resulted in people being grateful and then leaving us um, leaving us a small donation at the end of their process of using charity navigator. Mm-hmm. So that is that's um, one element. The other, I think where we where we attract donors, donors that are interested in systems change. So who are able to kind of sort of step back and say, well, if I help Charity Navigator, then I'm also helping the environment, I'm helping education, I'm helping food scarcity. So I'm I'm able to address a lot of issues. I mean, quite honestly, that's why I'm a Charity Navigator. It was kind of like mm-hmm. I don't have to choose, you know, between the environment and education. I get to work on both. Right. right. That's why I do this now, too, because I don't want to pick just one nonprofit to write grants for. I love all the nonprofits. So I like helping grant writers and nonprofits do their work better in the same way. And that yeah. way we can all expand our reach, which is a pretty amazing thing. And I think what you said is really important to note that you have a mix of funding types and your core operations are not dependent on grants. Your grants help expand your programs and strengthen that capacity, but you already had to have that core donor base, that solid foundation before you approach these big funders. And unfortunately, a lot of people think it's backwards, but funders want that capacity first and they want to see that stability internally before they invest in the program. I totally concur with that. And in my discussions with some of the foundations, you know, the, some of the, the initial questions are, you know, how is this going to be sustainable? Right. So it really, they want to know that they're not creating a dependency by giving you whatever they give you. Right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> They're, they're trying to act as a catalyst and yes. for some change, but then they want to know that you're going to be able to sustain it in some way or form because it's, um, and that's hard. I think the other thing that is, um, you know, being dependent on a sole source means you're dependent on a sole source and they actually, you know, and if they change, if they change their minds, if they, their opinions become um, quite strong in certain areas, that will influence your behavior and that could create uh, mission creep, which is, which is something that I, th- I don't think any of us really want to, to be involved in. And we want to be able to stay true to our mission. Yes. And I'm glad you point that out because that can be sneaky. That can come in before you realize it, or it can be really tempting. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, if we just adjust a little more, we could get this funding when maybe that's going to spread your staff too thin, or you just don't have the capacity or it's outside your range. Yeah. Or you're, you're performing unnatural acts just for the sake of getting, you know, whatever the, whatever the amount is, right. some extra money from this, this donor that really wants it to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, you know, stay true to yourself. Right. That's a great reminder. So as a nonprofit, you alluded to this earlier. What are the benefits of establishing our organization with Charity Navigator? If I'm, say, a nonprofit director or board member, why Mm -hmm. would we want to make sure we're up to date and set up with you? I think it's it's the third party credibility that we provide. So we will we'll we'll take your data, we'll run our algorithms on it. We'll also give you feedback on it. And then you have that if you if you get the let's say you get three or four stars as a as a rating from Charity Navigator, you can then we've got a branding kit that lets you take the, those we actually one thing that's worth noting with the new with the new site is that we have a brand kit for both three and four stars. Before it was just the four star branding kit, but you can add that to your to your mailings. You can add it to your website nice. and you promote based on that um, sort of seal of approval, so to speak. Okay, good. And so that I think is a way of building credibility, letting folks know that you're there. Mm-hmm. So that's just pure sort of development and marketing of of the of the status that you receive through through our rating. 
The other is that you're now discoverable on a different platform, right? So someone's looking for what you do, where you're doing it, and how you're doing it. They're going to find you on Charity Navigator, right? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. that's a great way of um, finding a new donor. That's a tremendous asset to be able to have that searchability. Yeah. And along those lines, is there nonprofits that are listening may be wondering, is there a fee for this? Is there an annual membership, anything like that, that the nonprofit has to commit to? That's a great question. And a founding principle of Charity Navigator was never charge the donor, never charge the charities. So we are totally free and we will never charge you uh, for a rating. Uh, we just need you to give us your data. And actually, we need you to give us your data every year. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not not every five years. It's every year. Not and a one and done. <laughs> it's not. I mean, you know, go back to what we were saying about updating your website. You've got to update your information. And we're trying to make that a, as, as streamlined and easy a process. We're also just worth noting, we're working with the other data collectors. So we work with Candid. Candid collects a lot of data on charities. And we're working on a way so that we're not asking you for the same information across mm -hmm. both our platforms. So Good. Charity Navigator are working to do sort of back-end data sharing and ensuring that there isn't useless redundancy in what we ask you. But we're both, as organizations, asking you for data. And uh, yeah, and our ratings are only as good as your data. Right. So. Right. I mean, you can't make it up out of thin air. So yep. I say that when I'm working on a project for a client and they're worried about sending me too much information and overwhelmingly. And I'm like, no, no, no. You send me whatever and I can weed through and pull out what I need, but I can't make up something from scratch if I don't have it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Well, and I think that's such a huge benefit because I'm just thinking of some of the small, small nonprofits that I've encountered who maybe just created a website or maybe just don't have much traffic to it. And mm -hmm. they're not going to show up in search results. It's not optimized for Google. All the things like it really, they're kind of invisible in the online space. And by doing this, it gives a huge boost to that searchability and discoverability, like you were saying. hundred percent. And it's, and you know, it's hard starting out. It's really hard. And, and a lot of small organizations really, they struggle and many won't make it, but it's, so you want to, you want to find a way of getting the word out, being discoverable and be, you know, being findable, let's say in a way that is not costing you too much effort. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you know, you will show up in our database because you are a, um, a legally registered 501c3 charity. But you'll be promoted within that database if we actually have some additional data than just what we get from the IRS's business master file. Mm -hmm. right? So the the more you give us, the more it's kind of it it adds more. You end up in more searches, and right. that's and that's really what you want. You know, it's sort of. You know, the tech jargon is SEO and, you know, all of, you know, how, how do I, how do I increase my rankings in the different search engines? Well, a lot of it's about showing up and providing data. Right. I think that's a wonderful service to provide to both sides of the equation and to all parts of the sector to have that available. No, I think that's, um, it's one of the, it's one of the value adds that we provide. Mm -hmm. It, it is about creating a meeting place between you know, donors that care about a cause and charities that are addressing that cause. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great way to connect and very innovative. I know it's a huge, huge undertaking to revamp and create all these additional elements and features and search terms. You mentioned you're doing it somewhat in phases. And right now you're focused on the donor experience and searchability. Do you want to address then the nonprofit side of things? Yes. And this is an area where um, we're not there yet. Um, we have, as I've, I've been talking about the nonprofit portal, that experience of the nonprofit portal is, it's not quite done, right? And what we're, our focus at this time uh, was we're going into the giving season. We wanted the, the main website to be up and ready and working in a way that was going to allow the 
all the donors to really find you and give to you. We're playing a little bit of catch up with the nonprofit portal. If you go back to what I was saying earlier and that we're, we're bringing two systems together. So there's the star system and there's a portal associated with the star system. There's also a portal associated with the encompass system. Those systems are still separate and they are coming together, but they're not, you know, it's still, I wish the user experience were, was better. Mm -hmm. It's getting better. Actually, within the month, it's going to be significantly better and we'll have a whole new front end on it and it's going to look nice and it'll be easier. But, you know, apologies for the, the bumpiness of the ride right now. We are able to get your data. I think the other thing that's really been um, uh, tricky for us and I think tricky for everyone is that one of our major data sources is coming from the IRS. And the IRS was massively delayed uh, through sort of cutbacks in the department and the effect of COVID. And so their, up, their ability to update and process the, the, the um, IRS Forms 990 has been massively impacted. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's a lot of old data um, because of some of these problems. And the one thing I'm, I'm saying this in part, not to sort of, you know, to ding the IRS, but just say the IRS is behind, our portal lets you upload your 990. So if you have um, if you have an old, old information, another incentive to come to the nonprofit portal is it's a way for you to give us your more recent IRS Form 990, and we'll use that as part of your rating. So I would, you know, come to the nonprofit portal. It's just charitynavigator.org forward slash portal. And that'll direct you to the, the right place to actually log in, become, um, you know, an accredited um, submitter of data for your organization. You can upload your 990. You can also update your information across the different uh, beacons or areas of focus. And finally, if you have a if you have a good rating, you can download your branding kit and then um, get the collaterals that you need for promoting your charity navigator rating on your own website. Mm -hmm. and, I think yeah. that's a tremendous thing to do. I mean, why not? And it shouldn't take too long, right? In theory, like if you have the information, you have your 990, just spend some dedicated time to sit down and upload the information. And that really would give a credibility boost. And just to show that, hey, we're a legit nonprofit here. We're doing good work. We've been reviewed by, you said, this independent agency. And here's our results that we can proudly display. Yep. And I think the other thing, you know, aspirationally where we're headed with the portal is that we also, in the same way we provide tools for donors, we want to provide tools for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so give you, particularly for smaller, younger nonprofits to actually how to get started. Also comparative tools where you can do some analysis of how you're doing uh, with regard to your peers and you're within a specific sector area. So it, it's this is going to be, you know, if we speak again in a year or two, I think I, it'll be a very different uh, discussion just to be able to talk about what's available in the portal. We'll have to get that on the calendar. because <laughs> I know technology is such a work in progress. I mean, if I were to buy a computer today, it would be outdated a month from now just by nature of technology and how yeah. fast it's changing. And so I'm sure you're just trying to keep up with the new tech plus all the things you're building and then these different areas you can't bite off all of it at once but you're addressing the donor experience and searching which makes sense to yep. the time of year and the initiative that you're working towards and then following that up with the better nonprofit experience and combining some of the tech and anytime you update there's going to be some clunkiness for a little bit and some growing pains and that's part of it so you know it's good to just acknowledge that but then knowing that it's getting there and it will get there is encouraging i think that's you know it, it's kind of it's a nice metaphor for life right <laughs> we're constantly changing and improving <laughs> and then things break and then you got to get them fixed and yes. you know it's like yes and then, exactly I, yeah i mean i just i Continuous improvement is, particularly when you have your whole platform as a technology platform, it's just, it's an inevitability. It's mm -hmm. all, you're, you're always working on it. And 
I like to say, you know, we're, we're never going to get it. We're never going to be perfect, but we're, we're going to get better. And I think we keep getting better. And as long as we're going in that direction, then, you know, I, I can feel, I can feel good about what I'm bringing to the world every night when I go to bed, but it's, uh, you know, but it's, it doesn't stop. <laughs> right. It's a work in progress and that's okay. Yeah. hundred percent. What's your favorite part about what you do? I right now, and given the, the intensity of the effort that we've had, it's working with the team. Mm. The, uh, the charity navigator team has pulled together like all different aspects of our organization and in working on this new website, working on the ratings unification, it's been so gratifying to just sort of see everybody pull together and everyone's out sort of looking for bugs and fixing things on the new website or seeing you know anomalies in the ratings that we need to we need to correct and so that effort and um that to me has been the most gratifying particularly of late mm -hmm. from what i've seen of your team it seems like an all hands on deck effort and everybody is truly jumping in with full speed ahead well, really it's been it's been amazing it's been an amazing time yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that can make all the difference having strong team members and people in their seats. And it's and it's not something that happens necessarily, you know, it's it's that's a work in progress too, right? Yes. There's there's effort there and um and needless to say that you know it it's taken us a while to really sort of build that cohesion, but I really sure. feel like we're we have a great team right now. We're really mm -hmm. proud of the team. That's amazing to be able to say that. Well, before we wrap up, what is a resource that has been especially meaningful to you along the way? Hmm. And if I were to speak in terms of the um, Charity Navigator and, and the, my time at Charity Navigator, it's been a combination of, it's it's about... As we evolve as an organization, I have to evolve as an individual. And maybe I'm oversharing, but I would say both a combination of coaching and and and, ther and therapy and really like working on myself to become a better human being has helped, I feel has been what's allowed us to also manifest on the outside. So it's it's this combination of inner work towards outer action that really makes a difference. And for me, that's been, it's made a monumental shift um, in how I show up in the world. That's a really powerful thing to say, because I know the more I get to know myself and understand myself, the better I can accept others or be patient with our differences or quirks or whatever. It's very helpful in interacting and being more empathetic, I think. And it it's, sounds like you've come to some of those conclusions too. I have. And I, and I think my journey in, in this, um, I mean, this started 20 years ago, maybe when I was, I was working on a project, which was trying to bring together um, a fishing community with uh, an ecological community. And they were fighting because the fishermen wanted to, they wanted to sell fish and the environmentalists were trying to preserve the environment. And I remember I got very embroiled in this and then realized that members of my own family weren't speaking to each other. And I said, well, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, I can't, how can I be trying to save something on the other side of the planet? And, and I have my own families just not, you know, we're not able to communicate. And so that process of sort of saying, wait a minute, I need to take care of myself and my family then I can take care of, you know, then I can work on much bigger things. Mm -hmm. That to me, that I mean, literally that happened, um, I think it was 20, 20, 18 years ago. And, um, but I keep coming back to that. And I keep sort of, you get out too much in front of yourself, trying to um, save the world. But if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not actually evolving yourself, be careful, mm -hmm. you know, you may be, you may be misrepresenting things. <laughs> What a so. great reminder. That's a really powerful example of that too. Yeah. 
Well, tell us where people can connect to learn more. And of course, Charity Navigator is a well-known platform, but how can they follow along and find out more? So, I mean, the easiest is come to charitynavigator.org. And if you're representing a, a nonprofit or a charity, find your organization. And actually from your profile page, you'll see how you can get to the nonprofit portal. Or you can shortcut it by just going to charitynavigator.org uh, forward slash portal, and that'll take you directly there. In each case, you'll have an ability to to sign up to be you know to register, and if you choose to share your email with us, we'll then you know depending on whether you're approaching us as a donor or a nonprofit, we will we will add you to different. Um, distribution lists. I think you can also find us on social media across all of the different platforms, except t- we're not on TikTok at this point. <laughs> I haven't quite figured that one out. But <laughs> Maybe that'll be next. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, we're definitely there and uh, LinkedIn. Um, but, you know, start with the website, just charitynavigator.org, and, um, and it, it all kind of starts from there. Very good. All right. Well, I encourage nonprofits to definitely get the profiles polished and maybe dust off some information a little bit. And then donors definitely do your due diligence and use this resource that you all are working so hard to create. I think it's fantastic and such a labor of love from so many people on the team that it's been a tremendous effort. And I know it's going to be an amazing resource. It already is. Well, thank you. And it's been, um, it's been a real labor of love putting it together and um, and a joy to see where it's actually show, where how we're showing up in the world today. Right. So. And on top of the anniversary celebration this year. So that's a that's fun great. way to kick off a new decade of operations. And and I literally wrote that in an email earlier earlier today. It's sort of once again we've arrived at the beginning. Yeah, a new <laughs> chapter ahead. A new chapter. Yep. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been such good information and I hope nonprofits will explore all the resources you have because it's a wonderful place to go for reliable information. So thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Okay. What do you think? I would love to hear your feedback on this one and on the projects and initiatives that they're working on, especially hearing from Michael and from this conversation. I'd love to hear your questions, your challenges, your concerns. What is it that you're working through in your nonprofit or with your clients or whatever it is that you're doing in your role today? Shoot me a message at TeresaHuff.com or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I love hearing from listeners and hearing how the information has been useful for you and how you're using it in your work. It's so good to hear what you're up to day to day and what kinds of causes are important to you. So stay in touch. Let me know what you're up to. Have a great week and go change your world.